How are you? Kamete is my very 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 good name and of course ukiangalia vile ambavyo nimevalia, ukiangalia pale ambapo nipo inakukumbusha vile ambavyo ilikuwa Jumapili ambayo ilipita tukiwa naye Veronica Kimani kutoka Naivasha mama watoto wanne lakini mmoja akaweza na kuaga dunia. Do you remember wakati ambapo alikuwa anakwenda hospitalini and she had this feeling ya kwamba it's either the baby ama yeye mmoja wao lazima angekufa but CS ikafanywa ndio inaitwa ya na wakatoka na wakarudi nyumbani sasa kurudi nyumbani ndio sasa hi vituko vya kila aina and then somehow akakutana na MBC I radio transforming lives usiku akitafuta a secular radio station unaona vile ambavyo Mungu ongeza watu right and then sasa hapo ndivyo akampata mtumishi wa Mungu apostle John Kimani William akihubiri injili na akizungumza kuhusiana na spiritual attacks and of course kuna mahubiri mengine ambayo alifuata baada ya hiyo sasa kumbe hapo ndipo ameanza kuomba sasa na kumaanisha and then ile sauti kamnenea kwamba wewe angalia simu ndivyo akapata jumbe za kutisha kama vile ambavyo alitueleza wiki iliyopita na kumbuka wakati huo yule msichana wa kazi ashaondoka manake pia naye alikuwa na mambo ya kwake tu sasa imefika sasa mpaka ni ajali na nini na nini na baba ameambia watoto unajua nini mabibi mabatiku wanafaa kufa hapo kufa ndo huyu now last week was a bit scary i don't know about this week true haya sasa kwenye tuliachia mhm tuendelee papo hapo Uh, so accident ime fanyika tumeokolewa yeah. actually hata tulipofika nyumbani watu kwa plot walikuwa wanatuuliza mlikuwa ndani ya hii gari they couldn't believe yeah they couldn't believe mm -hmm. it was a family yeah, actually car? it was a family car okay. na ilibidi badilishwe the board wakati wa wakati ilikuwa inafanywa repair so mm -hmm. na hakuna aliyeguzwa and who was using it mara nyingi you or him. okay mm, mm, all right mm. uh -huh. so that one came like Peter Hivo and he he confessed he told me uh, I'm basically uh, I'm, I'm a regret why he said that and he's sorry and he has learned mm -hmm. na hiyo nikamwambia wacha hayo yaishe let us thank god we are alive, alive. because we could have perished i think almost the whole family yeah. uh, so hiyo ikaisha hivo mm -hmm. and sasa tukaendelea during that time now there is a time i received phone call from that lady and she Which she lady? was huyo mwenye walikuwa na converse sasa kwa simu oh mwenye alikuwa akuja and then they eliminate you uh, okay so she called me and she was harsh she wasn't kind um she gave me very strong words and um those words zilinileta down zilinileta chini 2021 zilinilijichukia mhm mm nikaona sifai kuwa hai they were insults mm -hmm. and uh, she told me she never cares about marriages and she called me so many names mm -hmm. and uh, ni kama nikaingiwa na spirit hiyo ya kuji kujichukia and all that so nilijichukia kabisa actually what was keeping me going is to mahubiri at least leo nasikiza mahubiri and i remember in 2021 i think it was in september somewhere I was so broken and I wake up in the morning I'm supposed to go to work nimeenda nimesimama stage na ngoja matatu nikaona kabisa siwezi so niliingia ya kwenda town and Manila I went to the church mm, I went to the church in town so when I went there very early in the morning saa mbili saa tatu nilipoingia church nikakaa chini I didn't have words to say ni ile tu unaogopa kuambia Mungu why are you keeping me why don't you just take me mm -hmm. so nilika pale and nikasikia the morning nakaa pale the morning naisha so nilichukua kakikoi nilikuwa nayo nikatandika chini and i slept 
Nika sema wacha, eh, huko, nika lala hapo chini, that is KSF, huko cha town. So nika lala chini, and thanks God, usingizi kakuja strong, and I slept. I slept, niliamushwa na watu wa lunch hour. <laughs> People are coming for lunch hour, nika sikia mtu wanapita. So I woke up and, ah, yeah, ni lunch hour. Na si kupiga hata simu, ni seme, I'm not going to work. I was just, nimefika mwisho. Kazi ya ki serikali ya makazi yako menye? Ya yeah, serikali. Hei, <laughs> hei. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so it was uh, on a Tuesday. So hiyo Tuesday ni service ikakuja at least nikasikia nimechangamka venye nimelala kidogo. I listened to the service actually it was like talking to me. Whatever was being preached is whatever I was thinking in my mind. So nikasikia nimeongeleshwa kidogo. Mm-hmm. Then after the service mimi ndo huyo nimelala. I I slept. I tell you nilitoka hiyo church. The following day on Wednesday, Zanani. I'm not calling, I'm not even there. Are I'm you seeing these calls from your Ata colleagues? Ata pana, ni make a vibration uko. Sasa ni ile siku ni mesema, God it is you and me, period. And I have nothing to say. So ulilala tena, sasa so ulilala, sasa vanya niliamka, nika wow. pata like watu hawako kwa church. Nika shindo ai, and then I woke up, I went to the bookshop. And when I went to the bookshop, I saw women coming with bags. People are coming with bags. So, I saw women coming with bags. They usually are Kesha. So, I said, Bas, me and Kesha, I'm there. I'm not going home. Until God has to say something, I'm not going home. So, I said, that kitu satato, I remembered I have to call home. So, I said, I'm going to call home. So, I, I called them back and I told the house girl I'm not coming. Mm-hmm. angalia watoto a different one eh, yule eh, a different one okay. akashanga ju hajai yona but nikamwambia nitakuja the following day something imenishika and i told them wakaitupoa so me i went to i went kulikuwa na youth mass youth service ikanipa mm-hmm. me i was told ni youth wanaenda huko me i went service ikaisha nikashindwa why am i going nikasikia kuna jacobs i went mm-hmm. so i nilika huko mpaka asubuhi Mpaka, I left the church at uh, 2 and I happened to meet one of the pastors and he revealed something. That is the time he revealed that um, ni miandiki wakifo. By just looking at me, she, he knew. Nakasema ni miandiki wakifo. And that is what is disturbing me. Mm-hmm. The so, spirit of death. Yeah. Yeah. So... Akaniambia hiyo Wednesday hata sikuenda home sana nani. Akaniambia there is usually a deliverance kama naweza enda. Ili kwenda happen sana nani. So me I went for your deliverance and when I went there I met another pastor. Mimi hata sijui anaitwa nani. Mm. He looks at me and akanishika hapa na akaniambia me the peace of God be with you. You lack in peace. Let that peace be with you. Mimi nilisikia. Shwa. Nikasikia now I can go home. Mm-hmm. So I went home. Na nikasukuma, um, nas, nikasukuma maisha 2022 came, 2022 was so harsh, it was the worst, that is the year, sasa ume, chuko, ume ya mumpaka utakunywa dawa, na unambia Why? mungu, you are starting to repent before you do it, like God, please, Why now? forgive me if I do this. So you ever bought poison? Mm-hmm. And I was weighing in between, nikunyo na watoto. Hey, hey. Twende wote. Ama ni kunyo soo. Ama ni kunyo peke angu. And I, I never used to speak my what I am going through. So even when I'm with my friends, I'm smiling. Only one friend knew what I am going through. So, 2022 ikakuja, uh, ni nasikia, things were happening around me. So you're the husband. Things were tough. Mm-hmm. They were really tough. So in December 2022, to cut the story short, I, I felt so weak. And then I'm fearing weary. I'm feeling weary. Kama mimi ni mungu kwa nini unichukui. You're taking too long. And I see kitu positive. My friend could try to speak to me. Even my sister. And I'm a partner you know you have. Now life is, you, you know life is a gift. And it's a gift from who? Wana niambia wewe sindu unatuhu birianga na unatu encourage. Na wambia I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. I be positive, I be positive about you. Actually, I used to tell them I'm a living dead. Now, I'm a living dead. 
ni mwili mnaona lakini mimi nilienda kita mimi siko kitambo mm-hmm. but i remember in december towards the last week the last two weeks to to christmas to to new year nikasikia niende heaven's gate so i went there i didn't have anything to say but i just went so i went there the first week three days nikarudi nyumbani then i felt again i should go so the following week nikaenda tena three four days na wakati huu apili sasa tumeenda na mtoto wa my, my husband sister yake mm-hmm. so tulipoenda na yeye it's like they felt something wakati tunaomba because alikuwa anaishi kwangu sasa nimeanza kumvuta saidi ya Mungu so wakati tunaomba it's like they felt it wakiwa nyumbani kwao ni coast so even like oh, the, the family eh, they felt so very early in the morning they are calling tuko ile service ya 6 and they are calling and they are like you must go home how did they know or you your kids go home. told them we never told them sisi tulichukua na wawili the, my kids had gone home to visit the parents so and they didn't know ya kwamba mlikuwa katika maombi sasa it's like they felt wakiwa kule wako so and, they are like you must go home yeah we must na walitupea pressure walitupea pressure hmm. tulikunywa the kachai tu na kutukaenda na tulipoenda tulipata tumengojewa hey tumengojewa huko kwa barabara karibu na lami na who the husband mm-hmm. and he was sitting waiting for us so sisi tukakuja tukaingia tulipoingia kwa nyumba the moment we came let me surprise you hatukuulizi wa kitu so everything went back normal so the problem was mbona tuko huko what are we doing there mm-hmm. so me i started now connecting how things are na mimi hiyo time bado nikaendelea kuomba ikafika mahali he could anani ana, alikuwa ananitukana mm-hmm. like ananiomba akipata nikiomba na mzee hii maombi yako unashinda ngo kiomba eh wakati mwingine anapata nasikiza preaching mnashindanga mmedanganywa na mnasikia kwa nini Mm-hmm. Other times I go to church and then nikiwa kwa church ama nikitoka tu hivi anapiga. Anasema sasa wewe unajiona nilete ya visirani. Hizo maombi zako ni za nini? And so like you are being monitored. I'm being monitored. Mm-hmm. And uh, sasa relationship yangu na yeye ikaanza kukuwa was. Na tunakosana vitu hatujui. Yaani tunakosana spiritually. Hatukosani physically but spiritually tunakosana and then ananiambia mimi namletea visarani mimi ninafanya biashara zake zikatae mimi ninafanya and I'm like haji how mm-hmm. so he started now coming open hizi maombi hako nini huyu Mungu sijui nini so i, I, I now imekuja kwangu open who I'm dealing with mm-hmm. na sasa hiyo time sasa nina feel niishe so january kafika and hiyo time sasa ndo nilikuwa nimeamua sasa mimi na watoto we poison and, and we die. live but before i did it i got so sick i got so sick so sick nika gonjeka kabisa mm-hmm. very sick tukatoka nairobi tukakuja na na, na, na kuru tukarudi na kuru so when we went to nakuru my friend told me huwezi kaa hapa nyumbani ukiwa hivi let's go to the hospital mm-hmm. so when we went there Ninapimwa hii hakuna ninapimwa hii hakuna but the second time tuliporudi hospitali mm. nika, nika okay nikaambiwa nini nikaambiwa blood sugar yangu iko chini na blood pressure iko chini and the doctor was telling me that is so risky both mm-hmm. of them zikiwa chini your blood pressure, pressure and my blood sugar na una mambo mengi sana na hey so because this is the very last part wacha tusikie vile ambavyo kulivyokwenda maana kikiongea sana muda utapita na labda tujipate by the time dakika ambazo zimesalia 15 zinafikia ama zinafika hatujaweza kufanya mambo kama vile ambavyo inafaa so ehe aha so nimekuwa diagnosed yeah. nimeambiwa pressure iko chini na sugar iko chini mm-hmm. but uh, the doctor was hesitant Daktari aliniangalia and then akaniuliza wewe ni Mkristo I told her yes and then unajua kuomba nikamwambia yeye hata kama si sana akaniambia uombe sana and then i am like daktari mbona umeniambia hivyo akaniambia wewe nimekwambia tu hivyo and then akanipea just simple medicine akaniambia in case i continue feeling bad i shall come back mm-hmm. and then that time ni kikula kila kitu ilikuwa inatoka mm-hmm. unatapika eh and i was weak i lost a lot of weight mm-hmm. lot of weight so 
um tuliporudi tuka, tukaenda tu, so it's like after every three days nilikuwa naenda hospitali after every so uh, feb mwisho daktari akasema tufanye other tests mm-hmm. so tulipofanya other tests she realized that i was expectant and i'm not aware allah and then i told her how and then she's telling me yes congratulations i'm telling her for what and she laughed me, at me she really laughed i think at her in this how because i told her pana and now this pregnancy nikaenda sasa nyumbani akaniambia nipatie hiyo kitabu ya ile ya antinato nikamwambia staki so mm-hmm. i went home and i was digesting it and let me surprise you this child alikuwa ameanza kukua prophesied in 2021 by different people mm-hmm. so imekuja nime nimeanza sasa ku change attitude because now i know I, there is a baby in me na ni heri nijitekie kia yani hiyo feeling ikaanza kunikujia mm-hmm. so slowly by slowly i started now developing my attitude my attitude my attitude so on a match sasa nime nimekubali sasa kuishi ninajipe hope mm-hmm. and i was still praying to god so on march something weird happens all of a sudden i'm bleeding and i bled so much mm-hmm. na tukakimbia hospitali tulipokimbia hospitali they said tufanye scan tulipofanya scan mtoto akaonekana hako so the, doc- the doctor sawa kujua why am i bleeding nobody up to this day tunajua kwa nini tuli nili bleed mm-hmm. but thanks god yule mtoto aka survive mm-hmm. so wakati huo the, the whole pregnancy was just hectic then there are times i couldn't sleep ninasikia vitu weird tu mm-hmm. but i really thank god sasa wakati wa delivery ukakuja sasa nime change attitude by this that time now i'm strong i'm i'm happy again yeah, yeah. Eh, nime change attitude so wakati wa delivery tena sasa that, that feeling now came uh, i will go Batasa wakati huo nimejua ku resist. Yeah, yeah. Eh, so sikubaliani. Mm-hmm. Nina nina cancel nasema haitawezekana. Mm-hmm. So I went to the theater. Uh, before I went to the theater nilikuwa nimeadmitiwa ni like two times. Nikienda hospitali ninasikia uchungu na sikia uchungu. Nikienda hospitali wakiniangalia wanasema they are no liver pains mm-hmm. but niko na uchungu kabisa. Mm-hmm. So ikafika mahali nikakuwa admitted. Yeah. And then this child was to be born in September ikabidi azaliwe on August that was last year juu ba daktari walisema juu hawaili hiyo mchungu na mtoto anakaa kwa machua hatutangoja mpaka hiyo date mm. so akatolewa mapema na like three weeks mm-hmm. so alikuja and wakati nilikuwa kwa vieta i also felt i'm going actually that time i was going going and then the same thing oxygen nini so nikarudi mm-hmm. na life began sasa nimefurahi mtoto amekuja and attitude in my change and everything has started to go well mm-hmm. but mimi na my husband sort of atusikizani mm-hmm. na you can't tell hatusikizani nini hatusikizani mm-hmm. and then when i went home uh, two weeks later nikaanza kuumwa this side like this side ilikuwa inauma ungenifanya hivi masikio haisisiki ha, ha, ikiwa mm-hmm. it was That's so painful mm, i don't know mm-hmm inauma kabisa mpaka meno sometimes i could not even sleep and then nasikia baridi nyingine ni kama ya kupuliziwa mm-hmm. mpaka ninahama bedroom na hama na hama na mtoto and if ikafika mahali shule zilipofungwa i i told my husband i want to go home and he refused mm-hmm. i what i told him if i don't go home if you don't give me permission to go home i i'll die here mm-hmm. because i'm the way i'm feeling uh, akakata So mimi sikubishana usually siku anabishana na yeye. So I told him it's okay. Mimi nikangoza aende. Sijataenda tu sijataenda kazi. So when he left me haraka haraka na watoto we went, tuka, tu, we, we went home and from home now we started to recover. Mm-hmm. So I started to recover all started going on well. Sasa nimerudi afya and all that but it was after a lot of prayers my mom used to pray for me a lot. Mm-hmm and uh, nilikuwa na kunywa calcium na nini naambiwa ni calcium i change so thank god ikakuja mpaka ikaisha mm. so wakati iliisha from nowhere my husband writes a text to me that is towards january this year and he's telling me that huyo mtoto si wake ha huh? nikamuuliza what do you mean ati ye huyo mtoto uliza mtoto wangu wa kisichana nje ya ndoa you, you see that mm. statement hata ieleweki so i was like what 
nikamwambia wewe so sasa hii sinajua kwenye anaendanga naenda kuconsult hao watu so nikamwambia wewe hao watu naenda kuconsult ndio wanakupoteza wanakupoteza haku respond mm-hmm. so sisi tu ikafika time akatukujia january and we went back to nakuru so when we went back there tukakaa january and then all of a sudden towards the end of january akaenda akalewa for no good reason akaenda akalewa alipokuja jioni alitoa fujo mm-hmm. akashika mtoto akanyang'anya msichana alikuwa ameshika mtoto mimi nilikuwa na prepare wengi na walale alileta fujo na akasema huyo ni nyota yake alisema huyo nyota yake the other yeah, yeah the other kids were so scared i, I nikawa prepare wakaenda home people thought uh, ni kumalizwa ninamalizwa so they came mm-hmm. nikawaambia niko sawa eh mm-hmm. juu walikuwa nasikia sauti yake but mimi wanisikii mm-hmm. me i was just quiet when he's talking nini nini so he was getting more provoked kuongea juu mimi siongei mm-hmm. sasa mimi nikatarisha watoto na tuka, wakaenda kulala and after that i had to make a few calls akakomeshwa aache kufanya vile mm-hmm. but sadly enough like a few days later he left akaenda akasema ameenda safari ya kuja and uh, akaniambia nafika nyumbani kwao so i uh, nikamwambia ni sawa tu and that time we are peaceful so akanikambia ni sawa tu but alipoenda aka, after some the june the, the following day june nilipiga simu nikasikia komteja okay from 2021 to that year sasa nilikuwa nimesha jua a, nikisikia anga komteja na jua kwa Tanzania mm. so nikasikia komteja nikajua hapa something will come up and then he used to go kitu inafanyika home so nikajua hapa there is something wrong kuna kitu inaendelea mm-hmm. so kukaa hiyo siku hiyo siku amekuwa mteja sasa the following day nikaenda job kawaida mtoto nikamwacha sawa the others have gone to school and then when he came back alikuwa sawa and mm-hmm. then after that minutes after nimerudi amekuwa moto mm-hmm. and akakuwa moto sana Uh, we took him to we took her to the hospital we were given some medicine but walipopima walipima damu nini they they couldn't tell so tukapewa some antibiotics na tukapewa painkiller mm. ile ya joto and we went back home and when we went back home um tukaka hiyo siku akaka amekuwa sawa the following day akakuwa sawa then the other day hata siku lala usiku mm-hmm. the whole night I, nilikesha and mm-hmm. in the morning i was so exhausted mm-hmm. na sasa mimi nimeshajua what is happening mm-hmm. and then from huo wakati alitoa fujo mimi nilikuwa na feel feeling nyingine and that is the time i noticed death has a feeling i think because i could connect yeah. nika nikajua nikasikia ninasikia kitu weird and i used to cancel every premature death yeah. actually i thought i was the one who was to die yeah So after that and your John to come rudisha hospitali akapewa dawa she was okay the akaanza hata kucheza cheza and then John yata she slept well and uh, there is a dream that i had i, I told i shared it with somebody na akaniambia and then that night tukalala we slept so peacefully kuamka mm. saa kumi. mimi ninasikia mtoto ana hema mm-hmm. and then i'm wondering what is happening nikaambiwa m- nika nikashika mtoto na nikawasha stima first born wangu akakuja akaniambia ai mbona mtoto anafanya hivyo nikamwambia sijui so tukakimbia hospitali mm-hmm. but by the time tufikia hospitali she was not there what mm, she rested just like this yeah she just rested and I, i i was even telling the doctors they are sick like they are not real so she rested but later on it, the, that revelation now came that he, he he was trying to attack me so there is one of the pastors who revealed it is was me who was being attacked and that time i remembered that verse in nehemiah there is a verse in nehemiah nehemiah alisema god is a great and terrible god who frustrates the plans of the enemy so that time that verse came to me he frustrated hmm. the, their plans alafu sasa hiyo mwezi tukamuona and the same day day to one match very early in the morning nimeamka hiyo saa kumi. my body yote ni moto yote and then ikasikia sauti imeniambia hivyo ndio mtoto alikuwa nasikia when the baby rested was he around yeah he was around he came so quickly what, what was his reaction 
He was just pretending to, to, to moon. Now it was me, sasa on March. Exactly date one on March. So ni mesikia sauti, meniambia oh, that is how the baby was feeling. Na nikakuwa so weak, nimekuwa moto, ninasikia kichwa ni kama inakatu wakabisa. And then ikifika mchana saa tisa, migu yangu imianza kuwa baridi. So even everybody in the house has ametens what is happening. Mm -hmm. So they called a friend who was a pastor and uh, the pastor was crying. Na pastor akao sema, God had spoken to her about me that morning. Na haka muambia, sasa mimi Nicoline next. And she was pleading, but haka niambia mimi imani yangu ndo itawak. Yeah. I trust in God and he will deliver me. So mm -hmm. ikaenda hivo, nikaendelea kuwa mgonjwa hivo the following day. Ikafika mahali, my heartbeat was 115. Mm -hmm. A normal heartbeat is 72. But the pressure is okay. So, but actually, how I live in Bona. Mm -hmm. So, I was told to, to near the home. Nipomziki, I was given some medicine and then okay. I was told back. Sasa, hiyo usiku, ikazidi. Sasa, heartbeat, ukuniangali hapa, ikupa. Thanks, God. Hiyo um, usiku yote, nilikuwa mpaka, nilikuwa na nyuele. Nikasema, ikatwe. If I'm dying, let me die without this hair. Mm. Because my head is really aching. I'm so hot and everything. So to we to kambi watu wombe so we prayed we prayed sasa mimi kafika mahali sasa saa 10 ni saa 8 ya usiku hatujalala sasa mimi naona saa 10 na approach na kumbuka hapo ndio mtoto alipomzukia yeah. so uh, ninajua where i'm heading to ilipofika saa 9 mimi told god nilikuwa mpaka naogopa kulala yeah. juu nilikuwa naona nitalala na nikufe so i told god anipe tu usigizi na kama anataka kunichukua ajitukuze ye mwenyewe Achukue tu maisha yangu. Ajitukuze yeah. mwenyewe. So that they can know that there is a God. And a great God than whatever they worship. Mm. So mimi nikashikuwa na usingiza na nikalala. I woke up at six. Yeah. Na nilipu amuka everybody. And that time wakati huo sasa siku hata kuangu ni metoka kuangu. Mm. Mm. So I'm in a friend's house. So tulipu amuka six I was normal. Very normal. The attack was normal. Everything went normal. Kila kitu, pressure. Like miraculously, everything eh, normalized. Everything, and kila mpudu, aje. Aje. Mimi kwanza nilikuwa niko, am I alive? Am I have gone to another world? Yeah. So God, wow. God rescued me like that. Okay. Yeah. So these things, I, I really want to tell. So it was revealed to me that 100,000 shillings had been given for me to rest. For you to die? Yeah, for me to die. A sacrifice had been made for me to die. And you're still alive? I'm and alive. here you are. I'm alive. Uh -huh, but so right now, now you're okay with your kids? Yeah, right now we are, we are okay. Okay. Okay, what I want to tell you, uh, trust in God. It's just everything. Mimi nilipopitia those text messages, na nakulingana na mambo yenye ilifunuliwa, a lot of money, I think more than 500,000, have been given Mimi Nipumzike, but it is by the grace of God that I am alive. Yeah. So I want to tell you, not just wewe mwenye unapitia, hata yule mwenye unafikiria all is well, all is not always well. So kila mtu let us trust in God and he will fight our battles yeah. and he fights well, he yeah. fights really well. Oh, yes. And we, we will not be frustrated. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Hey, time in the Asia, but what? Veronica Kimani, <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, hey. Okay. Spiritual battles, spiritual attacks, but God rescued her and the three children. And right now, akiangalia nyuma, anasema ni mkono wa mungu ambao umembeba. Kwa sababu, his grace is sufficient. Na mungu daima sifa na utukufu ni kwake. Kamite is my very good name. Lala salamu salmi next Sunday. Another wonderful testimony, Kwaheri.